a hands-on walkthrough and comparison of iOS 16.1. Folks, this is a big new update with lots of new changes and features, some of which I think you're really gonna like. Check it out right now. So in iOS 16.1, you're gonna be happy to find a refined battery indicator with the battery percentage if you choose to enable it. So of course, by default, the battery percentage is disabled. You can always access it via the control center. But if you go to settings and you go to battery, you're gonna see the battery percentage option. Now that in and of itself is not new, but what is new is the updated design of the indicator. So now it will actually display not only the battery percentage, but it will fill in the battery to indicate how much percentage is remaining. So in previous versions of iOS 16, if you had greater than 20% battery, the entire indicator was filled in as if it was 100% charged. That's no longer the case. Another handy iOS 16.1 feature is the return of the battery status on the lock screen when charging. So here on iOS 16.0.3, you can see I'm charging, but when I wake my device, it doesn't tell me what the battery status is. And of course I don't have the battery percentage enabled in the status bar. So after that initial charge, when you plug in, you're kind of left in the dark. But here on iOS 16.1, of course you get the charging status when you first plug in, but I have the battery percentage disabled in the status bar. But notice when I tap the screen, it tells me the charging status just like that. I'm happy to see that feature return. Another nice iOS 16.1 improvement is the low power mode indicator for the battery widget. Not only will it display for the, the actual device you're using, but now, it'll show your Apple Watch when in low power mode as well. So you can see the battery widget for the Apple Watch change to yellow to indicate so. And in iOS 16.1, when you go back to settings and go to battery, you're gonna notice the heading now says battery health and charging. Previously, it just said battery health. Now, why the, why the and charging, you're probably asking. Well, along with optimized battery charging, there's now a new clean energy charging feature. And the goal of this feature is to help users reduce their carbon footprint while charging. So basically this feature will selectively charge when low carbon emission electricity is available. Now you have the option of turning this off for a single day or turning it off permanently. Now here's a subtle but nice change when you enable tinting for the lock screen clock. Well, you'll notice that that tint will now change to correspond with the album artwork. Previously, it would keep that tint it would just look a little odd. For example, as you can see right here with that yellow background, that blue looks a little out of place. And in iOS 16.1, you can now quickly customize the home screen layout just by tapping the customize button. So previously, if you tap customize, it will just take you to customize the lock screen. Uh, but here on the left in 16.1, it gives you the option immediately to customize your home screen. Whereas previously it took, yes, an extra tap to customize the home screen layout. To go along with that, there are some updated wallpaper preferences in the settings app. And this is actually folks, a really nice change. So previously you could only view the currently configured wallpaper as you can see here. Uh, and while that's okay, with iOS 16 and the ability to have multiple wallpapers, it's a lot nicer to be able to just swipe through all the various wallpapers you have configured and select a desired wallpaper and set it as current, as you can see there. So that's a really nice change. It, it just makes more sense to be able to do that within the settings app instead of having to go back to the lock screen in order to change your wallpaper. And of course you can add new wallpaper as well. Apple has fixed some of the bugs with the copy and paste permissions that people were having problems with initially with iOS 16, but they've taken it a step further now here in 16.1 because now you'll find per app permissions for copy and paste. So if I go down to Yoink, which I allowed earlier, you'll see, oh no, this is the previous version of iOS. This is 16.0.3, but here on 16.1, you see it paste from other apps. So you actually have the paste permissions on an app by app basis in 16.1. Now, one change I would like to see in the future is to have all these permissions grouped within the settings privacy preference panel. And that would give you a quick overview of all the apps 
that have that permission. Now, if you go to settings, app store, you'll find a new setting to preload in-app content. So this will automatically run an app in the background that you've just downloaded to download content before first launch. So think about certain games that have a huge download requirements after your, your initial launch. Well, this will in theory address that issue. Another new feature you'll find is a redesigned confirmed to download interface in the app store. So you can see this updated interface. Here it is compared to the previous interface and it looks a lot cleaner. It's a larger app icon. I think it looks good. Now, arguably the biggest feature to come to iOS 16.1 is iCloud shared photo library. So if you go to settings, iCloud, photos, you'll find the shared library setting. Now you can also access shared library directly from the photos preferences. So let's go all the way back out to the root of our settings app and then scroll down until we find photos. And there we go. So now you'll see shared library here as well. So you can access it either way. So just tap on shared library setup and that will start the setup process. And it's pretty straightforward. So all you do is you tap get started and uh, we can proceed with setting up our iCloud share photo library. So let's go ahead and do so right now. Uh, then you're going to see a list of devices that aren't yet compatible with shared photo library just because they haven't been updated to the latest version of iOS or macOS or tvOS. You get the point, right? I'm going to continue anyway. Now you have the opportunity to add participants if you want to do so. So invitees to your shared library. And then you have the ability to move photos to the shared library up front. You can select all your photos and videos, choose specific photos with people or dates or manually. So I went ahead and sent the library invitation to a friend and now you can set up the share from camera option. You can set it to share automatically or share manually only. The automatic setting applies when participants are nearby. Okay, so we're all finished. Let's go ahead and tap done. And I'll show you how to change your library view. I'll also show you how to add photos to the shared library. So let's go ahead and do so now. So here is my library, my personal library. As you can see, that's selected. But I can quickly switch to the shared library. And as you can see there, it is empty. So let's go ahead and add some photos. We'll add that one. All you do, the little drop down indicator, you can just move that over to the shared library just like that. Super simple, super easy. And now you can quickly choose your view. So you can choose both libraries, your shared library only, or only your personal library. And I like enabling the shared library badge, which helps you to quickly see when a particular photo is a part of that shared library. Very handy. Okay, so let me show you the share from camera feature. So here in the upper left-hand corner of the camera interface, you'll see the shared library button. Uh, you can quickly turn that on manually or turn it off. Uh, when you take a picture with that enabled, it automatically adds that picture to your share library, which is super handy, right? So here's what it looks like on a device that has been invited to that shared library. You can see those photos appear and the device that's been invited can also share photos from their device if they want to do that. So I've just moved that over to the shared library. You can see it appears just like that. So again, all the participants can contribute their own photos, their own videos, and the metadata will also show where that photo originated, who it originated from, just like that. The dynamic island on the iPhone 14 Pro gets a lot of love in iOS 16.1. For example, when you invoked reachability previously, the dynamic island stayed in place, but now on 16.1, the dynamic island moves down for easy access. And the dynamic island gained some visual improvements and just overall design improvements as well. Uh, for instance, the timer with its alignment and size looks a lot better here on 16.1. And landscape mode support comes to the dynamic island. Well, a little bit at least. Here, when you plug in to charge your phone, you don't see anything on previous versions of iOS 16. But here on 16.1, you plug in to charge your phone. Look what happens. That's pretty handy. Again, very limited, but nice. You also notice some updated gestures to come to the dynamic island. So here's previous version of iOS 16. Nothing's happening, but now you can gesture here, swipe over to the next application, and you can swipe to hide, swipe again to reveal, and if you swipe down, you get your two up view once again. You also notice bolder dynamic island outlines when working with dark backgrounds. Uh, so here it is on 16.1. 
lot more prominent of an outline there. And perhaps the second biggest feature, or maybe it's the first biggest feature, depending on your preferences, but here, live activity. So we already had live activities before, of course, with the music widget and with the timers, but those were first party live activities. Now in iOS 16.1, third party apps like this app called Lifton can work with live activities in both the dynamic island and of course on the lock screen. So there it goes, whisked away into the dynamic island. You long press there to reveal, but that's not all. If we go to our lock screen, we get our live activity there. So let's go ahead and tap to wake and you can see the count just like that. Uh, there's going to be a lot of apps that take advantage of this. I'm just showcasing a couple of them that are already available on the app store. So the first one I showed you, Lifton, is of course a workout tracker. And the second one, Time Logger, is a time tracker. Uh, but like I said, there's going to be a ton of different live activity compatible apps to come for sure. If you'd like to see a roundup of those, let me know down below in the comment section. Leave a thumbs up and let me know. And it's cool. You can see I have four different live activities running at the same time, just like that. Now, this feature doesn't appear to be live just yet, but soon you'll have an Apple Card savings account option, which allows you to have all your daily cash go automatically over to your savings account. And of course, you'll earn interest on that savings as well. Now, 16.1 also brings key sharing in the wallet app, but it doesn't appear that this works with home keys. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this will only apply to hotel keys and car keys where you can share them via the messages app and things like that. Let me know if you know more. And now in iOS 16.1, if you don't happen to use the wallet app, you can now remove that app outright. So previously you could just hide it from the home screen, but now you can actually delete it. Matter is an Internet of Things standard that's made to improve interoperability between smart home device brands. So think Google, Amazon, Apple, devices all working together. Matter support is reportedly in iOS 16.1 and no doubt more details are soon to come. You'll also notice that books reader controls are now hidden automatically in 16.1. So here on the right is 16.0.3. You can see the reader controls on both. Now watch what happens when I hide those controls away, you'll see the little control indicator in the bottom right hand corner, it'll disappear automatically in 16.1. And now you can disable AirPods Pro 2 touch volume controls. So if you go to your AirPods settings, go to accessibility, scroll down here, 16.0.3, just the volume control settings. But now here in 16.1, you scroll down, you'll see volume swipe so this lets you disable the volume swipe controls. Now, that being said, I did disable it, but I was still able to swipe and change the volume. So maybe the AirPods Pro 2 need updating as well. Now, speaking of AirPods in 16.1, you'll find a new glyph in the music app when you're playing back music via your AirPods. So here it is on 16.0.3, boring old AirPlay icon. But now when we select our AirPods Pro in 16.1, look, we get a beautiful little AirPods glyph. And yes, it also works with the AirPods Max as well. So we're going to go ahead and test that out and show you that. And there we go. You'll find updated illustrations for the stock focus modes in 16.1. So for instance, if we go to driving, you'll see a new illustration. Not a huge fan of these illustrations, but uh, they basically have the same sort of design across the board. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comment section. So if you have a picture in picture going on, screenshots will no longer capture that window. So here is 16.0.3. You can see that blank DRM redacted uh, picture in picture window. But here you can see no picture in picture at all on this screenshot. Now, speaking of screenshots, you'll notice an updated menu interface with some updated icons as well when uh, tapping the done button. And you'll notice an updated SMS junk reporting pop up when swiping to delete a message in the messages app. Now you have options for delete and delete and report junk right there on the same pop up. And in 16.1, you can use Apple Fitness Plus without an Apple Watch. Yes, indeed. So here it is on 16.0.3. No Apple Fitness Plus option. Here it is on 16.1. Don't share my data. 
and there's Apple Fitness Plus. I don't have a subscription going, no Apple Watch paired, but I can still start a workout. And Apple actually will give you a one month free trial to Apple Fitness Plus if you're a new user. So what do you guys think? Do you plan on using Apple Fitness Plus? Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. What's your favorite new feature in iOS 16.1? And if you appreciate this video, leave a thumbs up. This is Jeff with Cellular.